they are extremely safe. Um, we are now, you know, millions and millions of vaccines into this whole process for well over a year. Uh, fortunately, we have very good data on the vaccinations with COVID-19. We've been able to see um, in the short term any potential side effects as well as now out an extended period of time for any long term side effects. So we had an opportunity in this circumstance since we knew the virus genome to produce a vaccine against the virus very quickly. People are getting sick by the thousands every day. And so that coupled with literally thousands of volunteers at the time that the vaccine was fully developed, we had tens of thousands of people who were willing to try the vaccine to see if it would work. So the data just poured out. It became very quickly available. Most vaccines, you're going to get some sense of efficacy within about two months. Uh, any concerns about safety within about six weeks. They waited eight weeks to see if there was any adverse reactions to this vaccine. And overall, they began to realize it was just very effective at about 96 to 98 percent. Side effects were uh, tolerable. People did well and that the efficacy was just there. And so under emergency use, they were able to produce the vaccine quickly and get it out to as many people as possible. It's been highly scrutinized in terms of its production, uh, side effects, efficacy. And so the CDC and the FDA are continuing to monitor for any possible long-term side effects that might develop. There's also a separate agency that anybody can report any possible side effect from a vaccine. And so that is um, available to anybody. It doesn't have to be necessarily a healthcare professional. It can be anybody who received a vaccine. So if they perceive that they've developed a complication from the vaccine more long term, they can report that. When you look at it objectively in terms of complications, in terms of efficacy, in terms of how quickly and how impressively this vaccine came out, you begin to realize that this was really a, a technological marvel and that people have really put their heart and soul in trying to save people's lives. And we're seeing now a significant drop in hospitalization rates as we start to see an improvement in vaccination rates. And so I think we are making a big impact. It seems to be that if you've been exposed to COVID in the past um, and have mild symptoms, when you get the vaccination, you'll revisit some of those symptoms. They may be worse, they may be not as bad, but they typically are very short-lived, usually no more than 36 to 48 hours, and people are generally fine. We usually recommend people take a day off after they get the shot because you can't predict how you're going to feel. But at the same time that you're feeling something is an indication that you're responding from an immunologic standpoint. So you are developing an immune response to that vaccine, which is a good sign. You can't get COVID from the vaccine, but it's a different technology involved in this immunization process than if you were to get the actual virus. In this vaccine, you're just taking the messenger RNA that codes for the spike protein so that you produce an antibody that attacks the virus whenever that virus comes into your system. Can the COVID vaccine cause infertility? No, it does not. Can you receive the COVID vaccine while you're pregnant? Yes, you can. It is considered safe. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology strongly recommends pregnant women, if they want to get pregnant or if they are pregnant, to get the vaccine. So if you're interested in knowing what are the possible long-term effects or side effects from having the COVID infection, whether you've been vaccinated or not, but presumably if you're not been vaccinated, you decided that you weren't going to vaccinate and you decided you're going to give it your best shot with the infection. Um, well, there's a whole new category called the long haulers. So those are people that um, they estimate up to 40 and in some cases, 50% of people have some long-term side effect from having gotten the infection. you are seeing now a lot of patients can end up with scarring in their tissue. They get lung fibrosis. I know two patients personally that have ended up on oxygen for the rest of their lives. Others with cognitive defects, um, there have been some memory issues, difficulty with concentrating, some chronic headaches. Fatigue is a huge one. A lot of people that were hit with a lot of really bad fatigue when they had the infection, that fatigue never just quite goes away. Another good question regarding immunity, natural immunity, having been exposed to the virus before. Uh, the antibodies that I produce in response to being exposed to the virus, will that be adequate enough to protect me in the future? No. We don't know to what degree you're producing antibodies. We don't know how high your titers are. In other words, the level of those antibodies, it could be a robust, strong response. It could be very, very minimal. We don't even know how long it lasts. It's estimated that if you've been exposed to the virus and had an uncomplicated course, you may have antibody levels in your system for a solid six months before they start to wane. And that can put you at risk for a new mutation of the virus, in which case you can get sick again. And that's what happened to the Delta virus. The Delta virus was a mutation that even though you're immunized, you can still get sick. The beauty of having the immunization is that it does boost your immune response. You create a higher level of antibodies so that you can fight the infection to a greater extent, and it will lower your risk of being hospitalized and almost completely eliminate your chance of dying from the infection if you do get it.
if you get the vaccine, can you still get COVID? Yes, you can. It happens all the time. You have to put it in perspective. You got the immunization, <clears throat> you're sick, I'm running some blood tests on you and I'm doing a chest x-ray and I'm not seeing any complications. And that's what you want. You want to tell them, see, the vaccine is doing its job. It is lowering the chance I have to admit you to the hospital because your oxygen levels are still good. Your chest x-ray doesn't show any evidence of pneumonia. Yes, you're sick from all the symptoms that you get from COVID, but it's not complicated. So we're trying to lower the complication rate, death rate, hospitalization rate, complication rate, by giving the vaccine, even if you've already had COVID before. We're now seeing this phase of patients coming through the emergency room and I'm sending them home. If you don't get the vaccine, there's a very good chance you'll get the virus. If you get the virus, there's a 20% chance you'll end up in the hospital. If you're willing to accept that risk and accept the possible long-term consequences, that's fine. Um, if you don't get sick, but you get exposed to the virus, that could also happen. The problem that you run into is if you get the vaccine, you're much less likely to be a carrier, even if you're without symptoms. And you're also less likely to give the virus to other people. The reason we argue for the vaccine is because it makes you less likely to be a carrier and to expose other people that are more susceptible to more serious complications from the virus. So you would be doing your part to protect others as well as yourself and your family. Mm -hmm.